So, you want to get the Nirvana guitar tone, but you don't want to spend any money. I got you. Kurt Cobain's guitar tone from Nevermind was iconic, and to this day, he is still viewed as one of the most influential guitarists of all time. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get that guitar tone for free. At the time of making Nevermind, Kurt Cobain had a small collection of Fender Stratocasters and Mustangs that he would use whenever he played. All of these guitars used humbuckers, so in order to go after this tone, you're gonna want something Similar to this, it doesn't have to be a Strat. Anything with a humbucker in it is gonna really put you in the right direction. To get this tone, we are going to be using Amplitude 5 from IK Multimedia. It's a great piece of software, and the free shell comes with a bunch of amps that we can use to chase after this tone. You don't even have to spend any money. That's the best amount of money to spend for a guitar tone. <laughs> In terms of amps, Kurt was using a Mesa Boogie .22 preamp fed into a power amp. This was his touring rig that he would use whenever he played shows, and they used it in the studio to record a lot of the Nevermind guitar tones. To get Kurt's main distortion sound, we're going to use the Mesa triple rectifier head. It's a little bit of a harsh guitar tone. It almost kind of sounds bad. We've got the bass turned almost all the way down. The mid is cranked all the way up to 8.8, .8, and the treble is boosted up to 8.3. Three, the gain is turned up to 5.1, with presence as at 6.2, and then we have it on the vintage setting. This is a very shrill sounding amp, a lot of mid-range and a lot of high end, and on its own, it's a little rough, it's a little hard. <laughs> As with most guitar tones, it's when you put it together with everything that it really starts to get that feel. Kurt was a big fan of the Boss DS1 distortion and Amplitude 5 has that, so we just threw it in. I pretty much just left it at the default settings. I think I turned up the distortion a bit. It's about seven. The level is cranked up to about seven and the tone is at four and a half and that just gets that really sharp, over distorted, brittle sound. <laughs> For the cabinet, we're using the 412 Brit 800, which is just a Marshall style 412 cabinet. The 57 on one speaker and the U87 on the other speaker. And I've got a lot less of the room in this tone. When you've got these distorted tones, if you put too much room sound, it can really build up and sound not the greatest when you're trying to stack tones together. <laughs> Butch Vig, who was the producer on the record, has said that he used a combination of the Mesa Boogie amp along with a Fender Bassman and a Vox AC30 to get some of the clean tones. What I've done is I've brought up the American Tube Clean, which is based off of a Fender Twin Reverb. Kurt is noted for using a lot of treble and mid in his guitar tone, which is something that we love around here. So I have this set up with the bass rolled almost all the way down. It's set to like 1.7. The middle here is at seven and the treble is all the way up at 10 and I've got the presence jacked up all the way as well. The spring reverb is turned all the way off and the volume is cranked up to 9.2. <laughs> cabinet that we're running through is a 2x2 two two closed vintage because I was trying to get something that was close-ish to a Vox AC30. We've got a SM57 on one speaker and we've got a U87 on the other speaker. There are many available options for the room that you can put your cabinet in, which is really, really cool. Right now we're just using the hall. You can even change around what you're using as your room mics. We're using 87 condensers, but we've got a couple other options with the free version. For this, I'm using the U87 and the SM57 evenly matched and then I've turned up the room just slightly to get a bit more of that room sound. You can really hear it decaying a lot, and I did a fair amount of A-Bing between the intro of Smells Like Teen Spirit to try to get this kind of clean sound that was pretty well matched. <laughs> Thank you.
for Kurt's iconic chorused out clean guitar tone. We're using the exact same amp as the clean tone, but I've put a chorus pedal in front of the amp and I have it set up with the level jacked all the way up, the depth almost all the way up and the rate about halfway. And then you can kind of adjust as you need. But this kind of just sounded good. <laughs> Next up we have what was affectionately called the super grunge tone. Basically what Butch Vig did is he took an electro harmonics big muff, shoved it in front of the bass man, turned it up as loud as possible and it just got this really dark, unreasonably distorted guitar tone that he would then mix in against the Mesa Boogie for these really big moments. Drive that up down the center to get this big, dark, gross, over distorted sound that just really picked the weight of everything up. <laughs> And then finally we have the guitar solo tone and that's just the clean amp with the chorus on and I engaged the fuzz pedal to make this just gigantic, wavering, overly distorted sounding guitar tone. Kurt was known for those one note guitar solos so it really makes those small notes sound just as big as possible. You can just hear it feeding back constantly. If that was a real amp in a real room, that feedback would go on forever. And that's pretty much all of the guitar tones from the album. And I know on their own, they maybe don't all sound the greatest, but when we put them together, I think you'll get exactly the vibe that you're going for. And that's it. I basically put a double track version of the Mesa Boogie on either side and ran up the super grunge run right up the middle just to really beef up the guitars. I like to think that that's a pretty reasonable recreation of the guitar tones from Nevermind. You're never actually going to recreate another guitar player's tone. This is more just to use as a springboard so that you can create your own tone by emulating guitar players that you respect. Hopefully you can take this and you can make a really radical guitar tone that's uniquely yours. If you found this video useful in any way, I think you should check out this video where I break down Billy Joe Armstrong's guitar tone from Green Day.